Minister, we have to go to the lines. We're having a very interesting conversation here. The numbers to call, 465-2555, that's the local number, 465-2555. And the overseas number, 718-577-2916. That's the one before it, 1-718-577-2916. We welcome your calls. I think, Les Roy, as we're waiting for the callers, mm -hmm. we could probably use the gap to get over across to the public sure. what some of the activities will be for mm -hmm. International Women's Day. As I noted earlier, we would have started off our activities of sensitizing the public on the importance of International Women's Day and the role of women mm -hmm. with a church service on Sunday last. That was at Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church in Sandy Point. Mm -hmm. And again, we want to shout out to the Prime Minister who did join us for mm -hmm. that, and that is important. On the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day itself, we have an awards breakfast where we are going through a process of nomination right now to recognize women for their achievements in various areas of endeavor. Mm -hmm. And I think this year we are focusing on areas of development and employment such as agriculture, law enforcement, science and technology, mm -hmm. and so forth. And that breakfast takes place at the St. Kitts Marriott. We do have a a list of government invitees, but of um, my memory is correct, we do have a limited number of tickets available yes. to the public who would wish to come and share in that event. We do have a guest speaker for that event. The guest speaker will be Attorney Marguerite Foreman. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for an inspiring address from her. We also have been planned throughout the rest of the 45-day period because International Women's Day activities go right over into April. We do have um, to finalize a workshop which is being pegged tentatively for the 7th of March for the industrial site workers. If the callers or the audience would remember earlier, I indicated that we have some 2,000 workers on the industrial estates. Yeah. And those estates are books in Sandy Point for Harris Server Controls and in Bastia at the C.A. Paul Southwell Industrial Estate, where we have Cajola, Jara Electronics, as well as, um, I, what's the other um, facility, Lutron Lime mm -hmm. Limited. We do have those three facilities. And of course, that industrial estate also includes indigenous manufacturing, such as the um, furniture shops, metalwork, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we have a series of school visits, which will be staggered for the same reasons we have discussed mm -hmm. in terms of telling young people what it is to be female, what it is to be empowered. The domestic violence protocol, as I mentioned, that is a matter before cabinet. Once that is approved, then there will be a sensitization workshop to explain to the public what the provisions are in terms of that protocol. What are the rules that should govern issues of abuse mm -hmm. and so forth? And then ultimately, over time, what we would want to have is the passage of the Domestic Violence Act. So that would really concretize what we are trying mm -hmm. to achieve. A women's symposium is also planned. And we also have a program for grieving mothers. Because let us not forget that we do have a relatively high um, homicide rate. And uh, when somebody takes the life of somebody else, there are two families in crisis. The families who are the victims' families, as well as those who are the mm -hmm. perpetrators. So we need to reach out to those groups as much as possible. OK, Minister, we are certainly going to continue speaking mm -hmm. some more about the calendar of events and mm -hmm. so on, of course. Very, very important. We do have a caller on the line, though. Working for you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. To the Minister and the Moderator. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Now, um, well, I must compliment Miss Phipps on her performance and even her presentation. Now, uh, well, I have a little um, dissonance between <laughs> you and I in a certain remark you made, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of parity and um, the way we go about getting it. Mm -hmm. Because as we go back to the cedar, 50-50, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. unless there is some, um, what's the correct, what's the word you used a while ago? Unless there is some mechanism put in place, mm -hmm. women will never achieve it. Because um, even at the party level, because this is why I say, you have to start at the party level to ensure that women candidates are selected mm -hmm. and placed in constituencies that they can win. Mm -hmm. And therefore, with a reluctance in doing so, we have to depend on laws 
that begin to state that at least a certain percentage of the parliament must be female. Mm -hmm. Now, Guyana has it in, in its constitution. Uh -huh. Or affirmative action, the word come to me. Mm -hmm. So women have got to rely on it until they're in a position. So uh, you and I disagree on that. Now let me get to another thing I've been lobbying for, and I hope um, it is brought to your attention. There is the common law inheritance act or law, whichever way you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Speaks also to the distribution of assets of both male and female who are engaged in common law relationships over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Now, say it does not have it, I have been lobbying for it, because in our situation, where most of the unions are common law, I think that law should be brought forward and taken to the House to protect not only the women, but the males also, mm -hmm. because we have a cultural habit here. When you have um, unmarried couples and one die, the family tend to move in and put out the other person. So sometimes women have children, you know. Next thing you hear the boy, the man's mother, his sister, his brother, put them out. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, there are laws, I think Antigua, Jamaica, Trinidad, a number of the Caribbean countries, Jamaica, have the law already. And I would... Um, like to ask you to see that it is brought forward in our country. Because, as I said, the majority of our sexual relationships, our sexual union, are based on common law. And women are more vulnerable to be put out. Now, on the issue of the World Women's Day, and um, last year there was the issue of the 16 days of, um, you know what I mean, in December. I was a bit surprised that they, no, no, um, no attempt was made to celebrate it. And so I hope that now that we're in um, March, an effort will be made to follow through on celebrating it. 16 days of um, activism against um, domestic abuse. So I don't know what you think about what I just said. And I am one who believes in affirmative action until we are in a position. All right, then. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Carla. And if I could... Hello? Working for you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Carla. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Williams, and good afternoon to the Honorable Mrs. Wendy Fix. Good afternoon. And good, good afternoon. afternoon to the audience listening out there. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And I want to ask Ms. the minister, dear, if, as a woman, do you feel comfortable in the way how you've been elected, and not, not elected, but at the same time being appointed to be under somebody, or do you think you're supposed to be able to be in charge of the entire area you're responsible for as a woman to be more effective because I heard the speak about the tabloid in terms that some people might just accept certain situations based on because they're a the woman and then at the same time you're falling in a situation and that but we didn't hear what made that situation happen other than what was spoken by the prime minister prior to this the government coming to coming in and I want to ask a, a question. The Minister's Social Services, right, is under your ministry? I beg your pardon, sir? The Minister's Social Services is under your ministry? Yes, we indicated that at the start of the program. Okay, so if somebody have an issue where they're, like me, it, like, just for example, like me, if, if I have an issue where my mother is under I was fall in a situation where she developed cancer and the doctor alert her and me and my brother and sister them can't take care. How will the social service services be able to help in terms of going forward if she needs an operation? Okay. 
Okay. Oh. No, no, one more plan. One more, one, one, one more. Because this is something that I didn't hear the minister speak about. And it's very important because that relates to the, other, the issue what they speak about, the National Health Insurance Plan. Could you elaborate on what is the new government plan in terms of that? Have oh. a good day. Okay, caller, thank you. Minister, could mm -hmm. you? Yes, um, I just wanted to thank the two callers for their questions. The first caller had three specific questions. She first noted that she is at variance with me for a comment I made as it relates to affirmative action. And, I just, and she has that right. Mm -hmm. But my position is that I approach life not from a standpoint of tokenism, but that people should be right, getting into their rightful place in life based on their ability and if they have a desire to get to where they have it within their power to get to. I understand what she says about the number of parliamentarians being enshrined in the Guyanese constitution. No, that opens up a whole different discussion, yes. which is not what this show is about. This show is focusing on International Women's Day and women's issues. It is a peripheral point, nonetheless, mm. but it is a, it's, it's a constitutional review mm. discussion. And I could understand where she is coming from with that, knowing that perhaps I don't have the data to support it, that perhaps maybe 50% of our yes. electorate are women. And by extension, they should be given every opportunity to represent their gender. But then what I would want to ask is, are these women interested? Are they interested in politics based on the current climate, based on the current culture right now? or? Are we going to say, well, okay, we are going to use the system of affirmative action to ensure that they get in to the cabinet boardroom, that they get into parliament by virtue of numbers, so that you then possibly can suffer another backlash, okay, in terms of somebody saying, well, you only get in in here because you lost so. So you still could have that backlash saying to you, well, look, Nobody cared about your ability to be in here, you know. You're in here because they needed a certain number of women to be in here, and that's how you get on the ballot. Right. So you have to be careful. In to, you have, you have all saying, so you, have you to be just careful don't what want a woman for. because she's a woman. Exactly. You want a woman, of course, who can make valuable contributions. And who has an interest and in politics. And an interest in politics as well. Exactly. Who has an interest in politics. So that is all I will say. I know who the caller is. I could have an extended conversation with her off the ear, okay? <laughs> her second question spoke about common law inheritance, and I understand her point on that. And she indicated that she has been lobbying for it. I don't know how she defines that lobby. I don't know what she means by it. For example, has she written to the requisite government agency, whether it's the legal department or gender affairs in the past, putting forward a case for it? If she has done so, has she supplied, for example, like a set of sample legislation that obtains in another jurisdiction? If I recall correctly, she cited territories such as Antigua and Barbuda, where mm -hmm. such things are in place. And I do agree with her. A lot of our domestic situations are common law relationships. And I think a lot of it is an outgrowth of the kind of history that we came from, where you have a community that is predominantly descended from slaves, yes. and slaves were not allowed to marry. They could cohabit and they could get all the children right. they want in the world, and then the children become slaves and property of the same estates right. that own the parents. Okay? But that doesn't mean we can't evolve from that. Yes. I am not saying that everybody should go out and get married tomorrow. But if you value yourself and you value the type of community that you would like to see us have, where you have a proper system, a properly family structure, that type of common law thing should become less and less frequent over time. Mm -hmm. But I hear her loud and clear. Sure. It is something that I cannot say that the ministry has articulated as an immediate position since I have been the head of the ministry. But it is something that is concerning us non mm -hmm. nonetheless. And it is not anything that we will be ignoring. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that is a discussion that will have to take place in a different environment, but nevertheless, it's an important discussion. But what I will tell the caller is that for something to become law, it starts with a process of consultation. Not just in terms of the question I asked earlier in terms of what she meant by how she has been lobbying, mm -hmm. but has she consulted or has there been a mechanism, because it needs to be in place if it doesn't exist, where we can then speak with these persons who will be affected to find out from them how would you want this law to be created to assist you. 
And I hear her loud and clear because some of the instances she's talking about, they're real, they happen. And it is unfortunate that you should choose to kick out somebody out of a house when they have lost the, the father in the family or whoever and tell them find somewhere to go and you forget that these, these are your grandchildren who will be homeless. And that is really indecent. It is inappropriate and it's inhumane. Yes. She mentioned the 16-day campaign um, against, uh, for activism. She wasn't very clear on what she was speaking about. I would need some clarity on what sure. she's talking about. And uh, my thing is that even though there might be national or international programs that are out there in terms of what we can be doing on the national level, we also have to counter that with basically a discussion and a decision. Can we really afford it financially? At the end of the year is a time when we are in estimates discussion. It's a time of the year when we are getting ready to go to Parliament to pass the appropriation um, bill for the government's fiscal year that is upcoming. So I would like to speak with her on that afterwards. Sure. But just to reassure her that the issue of activism in terms of women's rights and against issues such as domestic violence or sexual assault is something that is always on the agenda of the government. And we don't have to confine ourselves to a 16-day campaign, just like we don't have to confine ourselves to the, the 8th of March yeah. to recognize the achievement of women. The second caller asks whether or not I felt comfortable being in a ministry that has a senior minister and if I would not prefer to be on my own. And what I will tell that caller is that when I agreed to become a member of this cabinet, I agreed to become a member of this cabinet out of national service. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with politics whatsoever. It is a decision that I made after a lot of prayer and a lot of counsel that I sought and basically an acknowledgement in terms of what I can contribute. Because it's one thing to criticize a system, it's the next thing to turn around and yes. be a part of the solution that helps to bring relief and improvement to sure. the system. So that is not a discussion I would wish to entertain here mm -hmm. because I have never articulated to anyone that I had political ambitions of that nature. Mm -hmm. But regardless of whether I function as the senior minister on my own or part of a ministry elsewhere, my service to this country is not going to be solid and watered down in, by any stretch of the imagination. So that doesn't matter to me. The next question, what matters to me is effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Will I be effective to get to do what I took the oath of office to say that I will do? Yes. That is what matters to me. The next question that caller raised was an issue. He brought up a scenario. What if his mother had cancer and he and his siblings could not get the type of intervention for her? The Department of Social Services, well, I didn't mention it on the program, even though he accused me of not mentioning it. But again, caller, we are talking about women's issues here, not specifically a discussion on health care. But what I will tell you, Carla, is that the Department of Social Services does have avenues of assistance mm -hmm. available to persons who would require help in terms of seeking medical care. Once that is done through the proper channels, because it is done through consultation with the primary physician of the individual, input from the chief medical officer, etc., and where that care is accessible from, whether it can be done locally or overseas, and we prefer to go regional before we go international. There is also a cap in terms of what we can give because our assistance in the situation such as the scenario that he mentioned is limited to 5,000 US dollars. And that again comes from the fact that government's budgets are not inexhaustible and we want to be able to help as many people as we can. Yes. The government budget portion that has been allocated for assistance of the type he requires, medical assistance, is approximately $450,000 for the year 2016. Okay. Last year, what was apportioned to that type of assistance was three fifty, dollars and we would have exhausted that by September 2015. Okay.